Unit 21. Famous people. Page 82. Track 22. Listening 1. 1. Hey Lisa, are you free Thursday night? Some friends and I are going to see the new Halle Berry movie. Would you like to come along? Oh, I'd love to go. She's so beautiful. Didn't she win a bunch of beauty pageants when she was younger? Yes,、yeah, she did. And she's so talented, too. She's the first African American woman to win the Academy Award for Best Actress. Yeah, that was really exciting. Two. Would you hand me that book on the table? Sure, here you go. What's it about? It's about Gandhi. Oh, yeah? He helped India become independent, right? Right. It's interesting stuff. He inspired so many people. But did you know he started out as a lawyer? No, I had no idea. So, when did he become such an important leader in India? Not until he was in his 40s. 3. You look tired today, Nick. Here, have a cup of coffee. Thanks. Could you pass me the cream? I was up all night reading the new Stephen King novel. He's the one who writes those horror stories, right? That's right. And haven't they made a lot of his books into movies? Yeah, like Carrie and The Shining. They're really good. And the books are even better. And really scary, too. This new book is giving me nightmares. Four. How's it going, Amy? Oh. All right. I'm writing a research paper on Leonardo da Vinci, so I've been spending a lot of time in the library. Isn't he the one who painted the Mona Lisa? Yeah. He also did a lot of other great paintings. And he was a scientist and an inventor, too. Five. Hey, Josh, is that a Bob Marley poster? Yeah. Do you like his music? I sure do. He made reggae music famous all over the world. I love that song of his called No Woman No Cry. Have you heard that one? Yeah. I downloaded a great version of it just last week. Do you want to hear it? Six. Hey, Jen, do you know where Albert Einstein was from? I need it for this crossword puzzle I'm doing. Well, he's from Germany originally. That's where he discovered the theory of relativity. It completely changed the study of physics. Yeah, I know. I somehow thought he was American. No, but he lived in the United States for a long time. He taught science at Princeton University. Page 83, track 23, listening to. Good evening, and welcome to tonight's edition of Legendary Lives. Our subject this evening is James Dean. Actor and hero to the young people of his time. Edward Murray is the author of a new biography of Dean. Good evening, Edward. Hello, Tina. Edward, could you please tell us what you know about Dean's early life? He was born in Indiana in 1931, but his parents moved to California when he was five. He wasn't there long, though, because when his mother passed away just four years later, Jimmy's father sent him back to Indiana to live with his aunt and uncle. While growing up there, he played baseball and basketball, rode horses, and played ice hockey. He used to ride his motorcycle all over the farmer's fields, speeding and chasing cows. So, how did he get into acting? Well, first, he acted in school plays at his high school, where he won a drama award. He also won arts and sports awards in high school, and a speech contest, too. He went to college in California, and that's where he seriously started to get into acting. He did modeling for advertisements and appeared in some TV shows. In 1951, he moved to New York to do more stage acting. In fact, he won an award as Most Promising Newcomer for 1954. Well, when did his movie career really start? 1955. His first starring role was in East of Eden. He was fabulous. James Dean became a huge success. But the movie that really made him famous was his second one, Rebel Without a Cause. That was about teenagers who felt like they didn't fit into society. 
So how many more movies did he make? Just one more. Then he died in a car crash in California in 1955. He loved driving fast. In fact, he was driving his Porsche on his way to take part in a car race when he died. What a tragedy. He only made three movies. So what made him the legend he still is today? Well, I guess his looks, his acting ability, his short life, and maybe the type of character he played in his movies. Many young people saw him as a symbol of American youth. Page 83, track 23, listening to. Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Legendary Lives. Our subject this evening is James Dean, actor and hero to the young people of his time. Edward Murray is the author of a new biography of Dean. Good evening, Edward. Hello, Tina. Edward, could you please tell us what you know about Dean's early life? He was born in Indiana in 1931, but his parents moved to California when he was five. He wasn't there long, though, because when his mother passed away just four years later, Jimmy's father sent him back to Indiana to live with his aunt and uncle. While growing up there, he played baseball and basketball, rode horses, and played ice hockey. He used to ride his motorcycle all over the farmer's fields, speeding and chasing cows. So how did he get into acting? Well, first he acted in school plays at his high school, where he won a drama award. He also won arts and sports awards in high school, and a speech contest, too. He went to college in California, and that's where he seriously started to get into acting. He did modeling for advertisements and appeared in some TV shows. In 1951, he moved to New York to do more stage acting. In fact, he won an award as Most Promising Newcomer for 1954. Well, when did his movie career really start? 1955. His first starring role was in East of Eden. He was fabulous. James Dean became a huge success. But the movie that really made him famous was his second one, Rebel Without a Cause, that was about teenagers who felt like they didn't fit into society. So how many more movies did he make? Just one more. Then he died in a car crash in California in 1955. He loved driving fast. In fact, he was driving his Porsche on his way to take part in a car race when he died. What a tragedy. He only made three movies. So what made him the legend he still is today? Well. I guess his looks, his acting ability, his short life, and maybe the type of character he played in his movies. Many young people saw him as a symbol of American youth. Page 84, track 24, listening three. Nelson Mandela, the first African president of South Africa, was born in 1918. His father was an assistant to an important African chief, and as a young boy, Nelson often helped his father. While he listened to people telling the chief about their problems, Mandela decided he wanted to become a lawyer so that he could help his people with their struggle for freedom. After high school, Mandela studied for a Bachelor of Law degree. In 1942, he started his political life by joining an organization called the ANC. ANC stands for African National Congress. The ANC fought against the laws of the South African government because these laws made life difficult for black people. Even though most of the country's population was black, the people who ran the government and had all of the power were white. Over the next few years, he and other members of the organization worked hard, and the ANC became a powerful national movement. The group encouraged people to resist the government in a peaceful and nonviolent way. Mandela became deputy president of the ANC in 1952. He was now an important leader of black South Africans. As a lawyer, he helped poor people stay on the land where they lived, instead of being forced to move to areas where the government wanted them to live. 
He also fought against laws that said that black and white people could not live in the same areas or go to the same schools. During the early 1960s, the government began watching Mandela carefully, and he was soon arrested. He was sentenced to life in prison in 1962. He was not released from prison until 1990. Even while he was in prison, he inspired people in his own country and others all over the world. After he was released, Mandela continued to try to achieve the goals he had set almost 40 years earlier. In 1994, he became the first democratically elected state president of South Africa. He remained president until he retired in 1999. Today, the world remembers him as South Africa's best known and best loved hero. Page 84, Track 24, Listening 3. Nelson Mandela, the first African president of South Africa, was born in 1918. His father was an assistant to an important African chief, and as a young boy, Nelson often helped his father. While he listened to people telling the chief about their problems, Mandela decided he wanted to become a lawyer so that he could help his people with their struggle for freedom. After high school, Mandela studied for a Bachelor of Law degree. In 1942, he started his political life by joining an organization called the ANC. ANC stands for African National Congress. The ANC fought against the laws of the South African government because these laws made life difficult for black people. Even though most of the country's population was black, the people who ran the government and had all of the power were white. Over the next few years, he and other members of the organization worked hard, and the ANC became a powerful national movement. The group encouraged people to resist the government in a peaceful and nonviolent way. Mandela became deputy president of the ANC in 1952. He was now an important leader of black South Africans. As a lawyer, he helped poor people stay on the land where they lived, instead of being forced to move to areas where the government wanted them to live. He also fought against laws that said that black and white people could not live in the same areas or go to the same schools. During the early 1960s, the government began watching Mandela carefully, and he was soon arrested. He was sentenced to life in prison in 1962. He was not released from prison until 1990. Even while he was in prison, he inspired people in his own country and others all over the world. After he was released, Mandela continued to try to achieve the goals he had set almost 40 years earlier. In 1994, he became the first democratically elected state president of South Africa. He remained president until he retired in 1999. Today, the world remembers him as South Africa's best known and best loved hero. Page 85, Track 25, Pronunciation 1. Would you hand me that book on the table? 2. Could you pass the salt and pepper? 3. What did you do? 4. What would you do if you saw a famous actor? 5. Could you sign your book for me? 6. Did you get his autograph? Page 85, track 26, Dictation. So what did you do this weekend? My friends and I went to Los Angeles for the weekend. Oh, really? Did you see anyone famous? Yeah, we saw Leonardo DiCaprio in a cafe and Jackie Chan walking down the street.
No way. Did you get their autographs? No, we were too shy to ask. What would you do if you saw someone famous? Would you ask for an autograph? Maybe. I was at a restaurant once and I took a picture of a big celebrity.